What's up you guys? I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap, and today we'll look at saving money with DIY dog grooming. So here we are with Max getting ready to start the grooming. And the first thing of course is to see what kind of tools we're going to need today. So <clears throat> most importantly, we'll need a comb in order to get his hair combed out nice and straight. One of the things with Shih Tzus is their hair can easily get matted. And when it's longer, you really need to brush it very often. When it's shorter, it makes things a little bit easier. So that's a nice thing. And of course we need some scissors in order to um, do the trimming on his feet and around his face and around the legs as well. They can be hard to do with clippers. Then we've got uh, some of these uh, tweezer kind of things. Um, these are medical ones. I don't know. They're pretty cheap, but you can also just use regular tweezers as well. And uh, the goal of that is to get rid of the ear hairs. If you don't remove them, then they can get more kind of gunk in their ears and stuff like that. So that's not really great. And then of course we need some clippers for the nails. You can also use one of those Dremel type tools. Um, not a real Dremel, but they have these specialized ones uh, for dog grooming. Although we tried those with Max and to be honest with you, um, it, it seemed to create too much heat from the friction and he just didn't like them. So we went back to, uh, we went back to the clippers as well. And then of course for the hair, we're going to be using the clippers. So here they are. He's not the biggest fan of the clippers, so that's why you can see he's already kind of trying to shy away a little bit. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, we're going to use some clippers. These are his own clippers. He's got a different set than I have, just so we can spread the wear and tear a little bit. All right. But the first thing you want to do, of course, and um, by the way, <clears throat> I should kind of get uh, backtrack a little bit here and say that today's video is about how to do sort of a puppy cut or a shorter hairstyle uh, with a Shih Tzu. Um, so if you're the kind of person that does the long hair, I don't really know how that works. And um, yeah, so we're just gonna do a short, short hairstyle. So the first thing to do, of course, is to brush out your Shih Tzu. So we're gonna brush him really well. And um, then we'll be back after he's nice and brushed because if you don't brush him, then it's gonna be harder to, um, to cut the hair effectively with the clippers. You're doing well. You're doing very well, buddy. Always good to give your dog some uh, positive uh, feedback as you're you're doing things. And, and... and of course, you get a little bit of hair on the comb, so just remove that. Put it in the bin. Be gentle and careful around the eyes, of course. Looking good, buddy. Looking good, yeah, looking handsome. All right, so I think uh, we have the hair pretty straight here. And so it's a good time to start with the trimmers. Give them a little love before the next step in the process. Okay, so, oops. <laughs> Sorry buddy, it's okay. <clears throat> All right, so we got our clippers here, plug them in. And with Max, we're gonna start with the longest guard that uh, we have here, which is a number five. So this number five is actually from a um, <clears throat> uh, from a human <laughs> set of wall clippers, the ones that I use on myself. I just don't go down to a number five, but we're gonna use a number five on him. It's winter here, it's New Hampshire, it's very, very cold. It gets down to, well, negative degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> so not today, thankfully, but still, it gets quite cold. So we wanna make sure he still has some length, but if it's short enough that it's also still easy to care for. So turn them on. If uh, your dog doesn't, hasn't ever had this done before, then you want to be very gentle, very slow about it. Introduce them to the clippers, let them see that there's no threat from the sound and from what they are, just kind of put them against them, give them a pat. Uh, but with Max, we've been doing this since he was very, very small. It's not his favorite thing, but he's very, very happy once it's over and he knows he's looking snazzy. All right, so very important part is we want to go uh, with the grain. So unlike in my haircutting video for humans, uh, well, for, <laughs> I guess, short hairstyles, um, you saw me going against the grain of the hair in order to catch it. Uh, with dogs, you want to go with the grain. Well, at least with the Shih Tzu, this is how you do it. <clears throat> and so it takes a lot of passes. It's not a quick thing. Um, we're going to be doing quite a number of passes here. But you can see we have a good amount of hair coming off there. 
Good boy, Max. Good boy. Yep, so lots of passes, and you'll find that hair can accumulate in here and on the guard, and so you're gonna wanna clean that every now and then. Okay, the back is probably the easiest part. It's just nice and straight and long, and you just do a lot of passes just to make sure everything's nice and even. If you go too quickly and you don't do enough passes, what you'll end up with is a very choppy haircut. And uh, that doesn't look great, <laughs> so we want to avoid that. So we're going to take our time and do a lot of passes. And I should also mention that we do have the guard set to the, um, I guess, the closed position or the shorter position here. It seems to work better. When it's open, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't do very much. just with the grain everywhere with the grain being gentle very good. So I usually do uh, the number five for the back and um, for around his head and that kind of area. Um, but what we're going to do for his legs is we're going to go a little bit shorter so that just they're, they're harder to trim and um, it's harder to get the hair. So you need to go a little bit shorter with that. And then also for the belly because uh, Shih Tzus tend to get a lot of mats on their belly. So we're going to move down from the number five and I think we're going to use a um, a number four here on the on the legs and then probably a number three on the belly. So legs are very hard. <laughs> Again we're gonna uh, do most of the work on these with scissors afterwards but we're gonna start with uh, with the with the clippers here and just again go with the grain very very gently and just remove some hair and again we'll fix it up with scissors later but this is a good way to get started. In fact, seeing as it's winter, we might uh, we might stick to this number four as the uh, as the shortest length. So we're doing pretty well there. And we're gonna do his uh, back legs over here. Yep, and kind of the butt area. So that you want to keep, of course, nice and short, so that he can do his business very. Uh, he or she can do their business nice and easily. So, is this going to look as good as the salon? Not quite, <laughs> right? Like, I, I'm, I'm not that great at it. Um, I'm just an amateur. But is it serviceable? I think so. Is it good enough for... I think Max looks pretty good when we're all done. And uh, he doesn't seem to mind at all. And, Definitely keeps the mats out and keeps him in good nick. So I'm quite happy with it. And the hardest part can be to kind of do the inside of the thighs and stuff. So usually what I'll do is I'll lift one leg and get in there. Okay, and then similarly on the other side, we'll lift this up and get in there. Alright, so that's about, I think, uh, all that we want to do with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the clippers. So now we're going to move on to the scissors. And of course here we need to be even more careful. Uh, but main goals are just to um, straighten anything out that looks a little bit choppy. So I'll come in and, and brush his hair out a little bit just to get a good idea of how we're looking. And then try to just eh, fix any little things up, kind of round out his legs. Um, the hair on his legs and also uh, uh, what you would call it around his face as well. So he's made, you know, the clippers do a pretty good job, but there's going to be some edges and stuff where uh, you need to get, get in there. All 
All right, so let me get back here. So I'm seeing what you're seeing, kind of. And try to get an eye for what we need to do. Uh, goals are also not just um, about looks, but also functional. So one of the things that I like to do is to make sure he's going to be able to see very well. And so you can see he gets a lot of this kind of hair here around the eyes. And it can um, occlude his vision a little bit. So that's something we want to take care of. So very, very carefully, we're going to get in there and we're going to trim some of these hairs that can block his vision. And we're also going to do a little bit of a trim up here. Again, I'm not uh, some expert or anything like that. This is just do it yourself, doing the best that I can and trying to hook them up a little bit. Clean off some of this stuff here. We're going to give them a bath anyway, but just nice to clear that up a little bit. And then I think for him also some of his hair kind of gets in his mouth, so I like to trim that too so that uh, it doesn't bother him. I, I wouldn't like hair in my mouth all the time if I were him, you know? So I like to trim this stuff as well. Yeah, be really careful though. Most important thing is um, do no harm, right? I mean, uh, yeah. The whole point is to help him out, not to, yeah. Not for any selfish end, it's really just try to keep them comfortable. And then, I don't know if you want all this hair on your nose, dude. Yeah. Probably having all this hair on the nose is uncomfortable too, so I'm going to give that a little bit of a trim. There we go. There we go. And then last bit is uh, I like to trim this part on his chin here because he tends to get a lot of food stuck in there. So it's just nice to clean that up a little bit right here. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to do the feet. So again, we're just going to find some, uh, kind of round out the feet, basically, is what we want to do here. Uh, get that little, I don't know, make them look a little bit like snowballs, I guess. Uh, so you can, you can just kind of stick the feet down and then start kind of trimming like this. Uh, I don't know. Again, I'm not an expert, and... Uh, I think over time you, you get a little bit, uh, hopefully <laughs> develop a little bit of skill. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying. It's also honestly a little bit hard with the angles here. I'm trying to make sure he's, you know, you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Uh, but basically just, just make them rounded, you know, pretty little snowball feet. Uh, can you see that? Right here. Yeah. Pretty little snowball feet. And we'll do the same thing on that side. And uh, one of the things that helps um, is instead of cutting uh, perpendicular to the hair, sometimes you can cut just a 45 degree angle or something like that. And what that'll do is um, it'll help you take off a little bit of the, um, the bulk, uh, but it, it, it doesn't look as choppy. Um, so it's a helpful, helpful trick with human hair as well, actually. So yeah, you do little things like I'm lifting up his, um, his right uh, leg here so that, of course, he has to then lean on the other foot. And so then we can see what we're doing here a little bit better. And I think we took a little bit too much there. So his, his nails are kind of poking through, but that's okay. And then we'll do one of the more important parts for uh, uh, for Shih Tzu, especially if you're you're indoors in a place where um, uh, there's not a lot of carpet because they can slip a lot. 
So uh, what I'm talking about here is about the pads of the feet, right? So you can see there are all these hairs there and it makes it really hard for them because they'll slip everywhere on that stuff. So you want to get rid of that. Gently. Yep, just go in there and scoop out, scoop out that hair so that they're able to uh, get a better grip on things. And yeah, if you pull the feet back like this, it tends to be a little bit easier for them rather than uh, other angles. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is um, just trim the hair around his uh, sort of nether regions. So. so that's it for the hair. Um, we've done a pretty good trim, I think. We'll give him a, a shower and you can see what the, uh, the final product looks like. Um, I think it's going to be pretty good. I hope so. I, I tried my best. And uh, we did the, the pads of his feet. So the next couple of things are to do the nails. And I did his nails pretty recently, so I'm just going to kind of show you um, the idea behind it. But I don't think we'll actually trim very much. Yeah, no, they're, they're pretty short here. So with, uh, with Max here, he's got some nails that are, um, uh, whatchamacallit, dark. So it's very hard to see what's called the quick, which is the, um, the part that's actually growing. That's like, um, you know, the part that's really alive on the nail. And so you absolutely at all costs want to avoid touching that. If you ever cut into that, they can bleed a lot. In fact, they can keep keep bleeding. So you can get styptic pens that can help you to stop the bleeding if you make that mistake. Um, once when he was a puppy, I, I, I screwed up and I got a little bit of the quick and we put his, um, his paw in some sugar and that stopped the bleeding as well. Um, but it was only the one time and, and yeah, I learned my lesson. Absolutely. I felt terrible for that. So you're going to be very, very careful and never get too close to the quick. Um, what you can do is you can clip and then get a little closer with them. Um, maybe a nail file or something like that. Um, it can be good to use a nail file anyway just to make things kind of nice and rounded and smooth. And that might be one of the benefits of those drum Dremel type um, apparatuses, but again, Max doesn't like them, so I'm not a big fan. But so yeah, all we would do, let me see if there's one that could actually use a little bit of a trim here. Um, so yeah, you wanna be very, very careful. Make sure you can see what you're doing and just chip, do a little, little, little trim like that. And so again, he doesn't really need one right now, but that's the idea. Um, you want to make sure you have good light because you might not be able to see well um, where the where the quick is. So. And then the part that we can do here, though, on camera today is remove a little bit of the inside of the ear hair. Just take a look in here. Uh, it's really, really soft stuff. It comes out. Um, it is not. I mean, I don't think it's super pleasant, but it's not painful for him uh, to have that stuff uh, come out. Uh, you can do it with your fingers, but then you'll grab too much, and then it could be painful if you're grabbing a big clump. So the idea is just to get in there and then gently, gently remove some of this inside the ear hair so that um, he'll get better airflow in the ear. So he doesn't love it, but again, as long as you're gentle and you don't pinch any skin or anything like that, it's really, um, it just feels weird, I imagine, but it's not painful. So there we go, got a little bit of that, and then we'll do the other side. And then we'll just take a look at the ears and make sure we don't have to trim them uh, either. Cause that's, that's one more thing we might do with scissors here is we might trim the ears a little bit. All right, there we go, a little bit of cleanup there. And then yeah, for the ears, um, I would use uh, the scissors just to kind of clean some things up. So like here, it's kind of pokey. Uh, I might just yeah, do a little bit of a, a trim there. Yeah, just so it's not, not quite as uh, pokey. Okay. And then I used to kind of let the ears um, grow out a little bit more, but just because of this whole, um, what's it called? Uh, trying to keep his um, his ears clean, uh, I found it's actually a lot easier just to, just to trim right around 
uh, get the, the hairs um, comb down like this, but then just trim right around the actual edges of his ears. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I kind of preferred the other look for a while, but, but now I'm convinced. I think this is probably the, uh, the better way to go. So you're just very gently, very carefully uh, going around the contour of the ears and trimming the hair to that length. Okay, some more thing on the other side. Okay, there we go. Oh, we should thin this out a little bit here as well, I think. Yeah, it's just too much. Too much going on in there, buddy. Okay. And what else have we got? Yeah, maybe a little around the eyes just so you can see better. So I just use my fingers there as a guide and uh, trim that up a bit so he can see. Whoop. <laughs> Try to be symmetric and uh, yeah. It's not going to be perfect, but you know, do your best. And again, you can try this kind of feathering thing when uh, when you're unsure if, if you've got the skills for it. Which, you know, uh, I'm trying to develop them, but it's a little process. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so there we go. We did his paws, we did his ears, we did all of his hairs, and. Uh, <clears throat> We, we would have trimmed his nails, talked about how to do that. So I think the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to give him a nice, uh, we're going to give him a nice shampoo that has a, um, a flea and tick uh, killing um, medicine. And then we're going to condition him and he's going to be good to go. So uh, we'll, we'll be back in a little bit and we can see what the final result looks like. All right, Max had a nice bath, and I think he's looking pretty swanky. <laughs> I mean, obviously he's not uh, ready for a dog show or anything like that, but frankly, I don't really um, dig those looks very much. Uh, I might have gotten a little bit happy around um, his upper lip here, uh, but that'll grow back out. Uh, but generally, I mean, he's matte free, his hair is nice and smooth and soft, his nails are trimmed, his ears are clean, and he is in good shape. So outside of that, Basically just brushing every few days, um, of course doing your um, teeth brushing, try to keep their teeth uh, in good shape because little dogs like this tend to live a, a good bit longer. Max is 13 and still in great shape. So yeah, I think we did pretty well and you can save quite a bit of money by doing this. So how much money are we saving? Well, uh, for a small dog, you're looking at anywhere between $40 or $50 for the full grooming. So, you know, that's the um, uh, the brushing in the bath and then the ears and the, the trimming and all that stuff and the nails and whatnot. So, um, and then larger dogs are more expensive. They're going to be up to $70, $75, something like that. And it's something you might do, say, every six to eight weeks. So going at around fifty dollars, uh, doing doing this every every six weeks or so, uh, we're looking at over four hundred dollars a year. Uh, if you do a little bit less than that, then still we're talking about three hundred and fifty dollars or so a year, three hundred seventy-five dollars. So it's pretty substantial savings. So if you're not doing dog shows, I think it's a great way to save a bunch of money and keep your pet in good shape. Hope you found this helpful. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos about do-it-yourself and frugality and financial dependence and that kind of thing, hit the subscribe button. Ring the notification bell icon if you'd like to see when new videos are posted, because YouTube will let you know. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and a quick shout out to my friend Karen for hooking us up here with the Frugal Not Cheap gear. Thanks very much.